Okay, we now look at uh, the code of merge sort or the pseudocode and try to understand the algorithm. We have already seen a simulation of the algorithm in the previous video, simulation on eight elements. And if you recall, there are two parts in the algorithm. One part is splitting the large problem into smaller subproblems. And the second part is to merge the smaller subproblems into the final solution. So in any language that supports uh, recursion, one of the ways of generating those smaller problems is through recursion. And that is why uh, we see the first procedure in pseudocode, uh, what you call as method in Java, in pseudocode, we call it procedure. So the first procedure is merge sort. And I'll abbreviate it a little bit. I'll write MS instead of merge sort. So first we see a procedure MS. And it takes three arguments, A, P, and R. Now these three arguments are nothing but um, we, of course, need to store the input in an array. So A is that array. P is the starting point of the array. From where we'll start um, sorting the array. Usually it is the zeroth location is the starting point and R is the end point. So usually this is the zeroth location. And if the length of the array, if we denote by uh, like in Java, a dot length, then r equal to a dot length minus 1. <clears throat> in other words, we are trying to sort the entire array. So this is the procedure which uh, is called fast, merge sort, or ms in brief. And what is in there? Uh, the first thing that is there, if you notice, it is if p less than r then. Why is this check? Because p is the first parameter and r is the second parameter. This check ensures that you continue generating smaller subproblems until you reach a single element subproblem, as we have seen in our previous example. So when p becomes equal to r, what does that mean? the array has just one element. The starting element and the end element of the array is the same element. So that is why we check for p less than r. Next, what you do, uh, if you look at the code, we have this statement next, p plus r divided by 2. Now, this particular symbol, I don't know whether you are familiar with this symbol. This is called the floor symbol. Floor means whatever you get by doing the arithmetic inside that symbol, you take one less than that. Now, what it means is if the array is of not uh, even number array, that is uh, the number of elements in the array is an odd number, then what you get by p plus r divided by 2 is an uh, is a fraction, rather uh, something like 8 point something, 8.4 or 8.5 or something like that. So in that case, you take the floor, that means you take 8. So what we are doing here basically is we are trying to figure out the midpoint of the array. So if it is an array with even number of elements, then uh, we'll have an equal number of elements in the left part of the array and the same number of elements in the right part of the array. And if it is an array with odd number of elements, then we'll have one part of the array will be longer by one element compared to the other part of the array. And this floor just ensures that the left part of the array will be smaller and the right part of the array will be longer. Okay, so why do we need the midpoint? Because 
we will now generate two sub problems and you if you look at the next um, statement again March sort I am writing as MS we have a P Q that means uh, if this was my entire array I have found Q here this part of the array I am passing here even though I am passing the entire array but uh, due to these uh, two parameters P and Q um, the subsequent recursive calls will concentrate all computation in this part of the array and similarly the second statement there is m s a q plus 1 r in other words the second statement calls smart sort for this part of the array so this this recursion will continue right um, you have you are familiar with recursion so what happens is next time the same routine is called uh, this routine what we are writing right now and again it will come here p less than r the check will uh, succeed and we will further divide this into two parts and then um, we will recurse in this part we will recurse in this part when those recursions are over we will recurse we will call this one and we will recurse here we will recurse here and eventually the tree structure is generated that is eventually when this check fails that means p equal to r that means there will be only one element arrays now another thing to note right now is the third um, statement in procedure march sort which is nothing but march a p q r okay how the recursive program works is whenever the recursion gets over in one part of the tree then this march procedure will be called correctly with these arguments p q r as i have said earlier the entire array is passed every time but when the actual merging occurs the values for these arguments will be all different and the merging will occur in different parts of the array so that is the structure so you can see how elegant it is that uh, the entire generation of the tree structure we have managed by making two recursive calls uh, to merge sort this one here and that one there and eventually when the recursion ends we have to merge the results of the recursion and the merge procedure also uh, we have discussed in the previous example that the when the merging starts each of the uh, it is always merging of two arrays and each of the arrays uh, is already sorted so now we have to understand what really is happening in the march procedure now it's a bit complicated to look at um, but we'll try to understand uh, step by step uh, a bit quickly somehow youtube doesn't allow me to upload more than 15 minutes of video so let's look at the march procedure so here is the procedure march I'll insert, okay, I'll write March A P Q R. So this is the March procedure. And in the beginning, you can see that I have two other variables at the top of March procedure. N1 is nothing but Q minus P plus one and n2 is nothing but r minus q in other words we have two arrays so basically this is the size of the first array q minus p plus one and this is the size of the second array 
uh, which is from end minus q. q is, um, you can think of q as the midpoint of the array that will be generated as a result of the merging and uh, it's the midpoint of that array. So what do we do first? Um, we first copy that part of the array A into two intermediate arrays. Why is that necessary? Because remember when we are merging the two arrays, we are overwriting the elements, right? Because we are shuffling during the process of merging, we are shuffling the elements and that will overwrite the elements of the array A. So that is why here uh, you can see there are two for loops. Uh, I'm not writing the for loops um, separately, uh, just I'll denote by dots the first for loop and the second for loop. The purpose of these two for loops is to copy the parts of the array A that we are merging. There are two parts, right? That's the idea of merging two sorted arrays. One array we are copying in an array called L left for your convenience and we are copying the second uh, part of the array A into a, an intermediate array called R. So I'm not uh, discussing the indices of these two arrays or these two loops. You should be able to figure out quite easily by looking at the loop that um, why it is called le left and right. Basically, parts of the array A which are copied into two separate arrays and now we'll merge these two arrays L and R. Okay, so how does the merging works? Merging is simply uh, this while loop. Again, I am not writing each and every statement of the code. While I less than equal to N1 and J less than equal to N2 do. This is pseudocode, again, to emphasize that this while do is the syntax of the pseudocode. Now, this is the most important step. If li less than equal to rj, then a k plus plus, k is the index which we are using for going forward in the A array. Remember the A array is our original array. So it is assigned R J plus plus. Sorry, um, I made a mistake here. It should be L and here it should be I plus plus. Okay, so if li is less than rj, remember what I talked about the merging process? We walk along, the, along both the arrays l and r simultaneously. And at every step, we pick up the smaller of the two elements. So in this step, what we are doing is we are checking whether li is less than or equal to rj. If that is true, then li is the smaller of the two elements. And hence, we should copy li into the A array. And of course, we are uh, incrementing the two indices because we have to go to the next element. Else, if you are, uh, if this test fails, then what happens? Then simply A, K plus plus should be assigned R, J plus plus. In other words, if that test fails, then the element of the R array is smaller of the two, and hence we copy that element into A. So that is the idea. Uh, you can see the merging process, walking along both the arrays at every step, comparing the two elements and picking up the smaller of the two elements and uh, copying that smaller element into the A array. Now, I have to, almost we have come to the end, but we have to uh, just understand there are two while loops at the end. Uh, this, this part of the code is a bit tricky. What it means is when we have the L array and we have the R array, 